Now, turning now to Somalia, nearly one million people there are in dire need of food aid as famine persists and the security situation remains unstable. The recent abductions of aid workers at a refugee camp in northeastern Kenya and Kenya's military offensive against al-Shabaab in Somalia have shifted the spotlight away from the millions in the Horn of Africa who are facing famine. In the last few days, the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC, and Somali Red Crescent launched a massive food distribution effort in Somalia. The program aims to reach up to 1.1 million people over the next three months. Ships bound for Mogadishu port are loaded under ICRC supervision in Mombasa, the main port in neighboring Kenya. The ICRC's operation will also include the distribution of seeds as the eagerly awaited rainy season begins. Spokesman Ivers Van Logo. The aim of this food is more about seed protection. We are distributing seeds now to the farmers as the raining season is coming and uh, that they can plant, but they can harvest before January. Years of drought that have also affected parts of Kenya and Ethiopia have hit harvests, while conflict has made it extremely difficult for agencies to operate in communities in the south of the country. Much of southern and central Somalia is controlled by al-Shabaab Islamist militants who imposed a ban on food aid in 2010. The UN and the United States say the ban exacerbated the crisis resulting in hundreds of thousands of refugees fleeing to neighboring countries and squatting in camps like Sidika in Mogadishu. Kaltun Ali Muse is an internally displaced mother of eight. We and our children are outside the camp. The second day without food and nobody comes to us apart from you and our food is when the food cards arrive. People living in houses who are not with us inside the camp are given the cards in exchange for 100,000 Somali shillings. It's given to one family hut and others are left out. Families like that of Kaltun Ali Musa near Mogadishu are huddled by the thousands in camps where resources are scarce and diseases rampant. We have problems and we do not have plastic sheeting for cover. We are hungry and this is not a good life for us. We do not have enough food. According to the United Nations, 53% of the population is unable to meet their food needs due to the prolonged drought exacerbated by decades of conflict and the UN warns that the whole of southern Somalia is slipping into famine. Well, for more perspective on the situation in Somalia, we are joined by Dr. Sadia Ali Erden, who recently returned from the East African nation. Dr. Erden is a Somali-born physician and a human rights activist. Dr. Erden, welcome to In Focus. Thank you. Now, uh, you just came back from Somalia. First, tell me, what took you there? What took me in was, uh, actually took us in was, we have been fundraising, the Somali-American community, like any other Somali diaspora community, has been fundraising. Uh, not only have they continued sending the money that they have been sending to their families, but now they have taken the task of doing that. The fundraise every town, every state, every country. Mm -hmm. And because of that reason, I'm with Adar Foundation, a foundation that's American found, 2000-501c3 charitable foundation. And because of that reason, that foundation has got some money and that money was supposed to be taken to Somalia and to feed the people. And well, of course, I had to go and make sure that was really delivered and used for food and nothing else. Now, we know the enormous challenges there and problems. Mm -hmm. uh, for, from a first-hand uh, kind of experience, what did you see? The first-hand experience that I've seen was uh, you have to go through all these hurdles to get to where you really want to go, where is the where the people are. For example, my our first trip was to through Kenya on the Mandera border, right next the town next to uh, Berathawa, which is the southwestern region of Somalia, the Gether region. And within that uh, Berathawa city is a village called Belad Amin. Within that village is eight IGB camps. And the majority of those people are from Bay and Bokol region. Those are, that's the breadbasket of the Somali mm -hmm. society. And we went there, we did an assessment beforehand, and we decided to go to that camp because no one has really provided uh, a full month's supply. It was hit and run for everyone, but we decided to give one month's supply for 2,496 individuals. Mm -hmm. Give me a sense of what is uh, someone's life like in that camp where you visited. If you were to think of that person 12 hours, 24 hours. Uh, it's horrible. Uh, they 
you go there and before you know it, you're swamped. Everybody rushes from the baby who can crawl to the adult who can walk. Even those elder people who are sick or too old to walk are trying to make it to you as soon as you get there. You cannot breathe, you cannot talk to everybody, you get overwhelmed. The need is high, it's what, great. Briefly list, what are the needs of the people? The biggest needs, of course, is the feeding. People have to receive food, water, medicine. Shelter is one of the biggest problems. I have the pictures. People were concerned about the rain coming, and of course it came, and we did not beat that rain mm -hmm. to shelter them. Mm -hmm. No schooling, no hygiene. Uh, kids are clothless. You see kids that are half naked. You see kids that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, being yeah. and using as a toilet right there yeah. in, in front of the homes, under the trees that we were having the meetings. Mm -hmm. And this is just a, it's just a disaster. So right now, who's helping them? What kind of help did you see then? I have seen uh, scattered help, not organized help. And one of the emails that I've sent some of the uh, colleagues who are from the community and outside the Muslim community who have been helping was that the, the help has to be organized within not only the Somalis, the Muslim, but also the Christians and the Jews and everybody else who want to contribute to this effort. It has to be collaborative effort. Without collaborative effort and coordinating our efforts, billions of dollars will not make any difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we do hope that uh, your call and the calls of others like you will be heeded by many around the world. I hope so. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, Dr. Aden, we do appreciate very much your insights on uh, Somalia. Our thanks to uh, Dr. Sadi Ali, uh, Aden, a Somalia-born uh, physician and human rights activist uh, for joining us today right here on In Focus.